Exodus chapter 16. We begin our reading, verse number 1. The Bible says, And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Now pay attention right here. And the whole congregation... Not just a few, not just the descent of a few. The whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the, uh, by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full, For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you that you're our shepherd. Lord, you have proven time and time again not only that you're the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, but you're the great shepherd. God, you have often uh, led us in ways that we would have never dreamed of, but they're always right. Father, you've always sustained us. You've always taken care of us. Uh, And God, you have truly been a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And Father, we're without excuse not to bow these unworthy heads and thank you and bless you for your blessing upon us. Now, Father, as we come tonight, there's opposition here tonight. I can sense it. I can feel it. Uh, Lord, uh, there is uh, uh, someone or something that does not uh, want to worship you tonight. But Lord, I'm reminded you said, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Uh, Father, you said where two or three were gathered together in your name, you'd be in the midst thereof. Uh, Father, we sure do want to worship you tonight. We sure do want to lift you up and exhort uh, uh, your people to the goodness of God. Uh, But Lord, we realize if all of hell encamps around us tonight, you are still worthy to be worshipped and to be praised. Uh, and so, Father, we'll do uh, what we can, but we'll trust in you to do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, as Christian has already prayed, we pray that you'd put a hedge about us tonight. We certainly plead the blood of the Lord Jesus over this place. Uh, but, Father, I, I did not uh, just enter this race last night, as you well know. Lord, uh, many times it is not the forces without that hinders the church. Uh, It is some from within. So, Father, I pray tonight that you would speak uh, and that, Father, that uh, folks would not only become hearers of the Word, but would become doers of the Word of God. Uh, And, Father, I pray the Word of God would break as a hammer. And, Father, I pray that you would certainly deal with your children in a manner that pleases thee. Now, Father, use this unworthy vessel... Father, help me uh, tonight to put a watch guard about my lips. Help me not to say anything contrary to the will or word of God. Uh, But, Father, help me to say everything that you'd have me to say. And, Father, I certainly pray that your people would lead forth from this place blessed, helped, encouraged, and strengthened in their inner man. Revive us, Lord. Refresh us. Uh, Lord, I realize as we enter tonight, many have worked hard this week and even this day. They've had to contend with the world, the devil, the flesh. Uh, Lord, uh, they've had to contend with uh, uh, Satan trying and striving to steal away what you have done in their hearts through revivals uh, uh, these past few weeks. Uh, And Lord, I realize that some tonight may be empty, some may be drained, some may be hurting. uh, And so, Father, we ask that the sweet Holy Ghost of God uh, would do a supernatural work in the hearts and lives of your people. And Father, we'll certainly bless you for what you do. Have your will and way now, for it's in the holy 
and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus, we do pray. Amen. And amen. I want to draw your attention to a few things uh, before we get to the message. I want you to notice, first of all, what we pointed out in verse number two. Notice the murmuring. The Bible said the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Look in verse number eight. And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the e uh, evening flesh to eat, uh, and in the morning bread to the full, uh, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which you murmur against him. Uh, and what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, uh, but against the Lord. Uh, uh, can I say, in this passage, under this timetable, in the congregation of God's people, uh, uh, they were murmuring against uh, God's man, and in so doing, they were murmuring against the Lord himself. Uh, uh, they went so far as to say they would to God uh, that they'd still be enslaved in Egypt, uh, that they'd still be beaten, mistreated, uh, done wrongfully in, e in Egypt, uh, uh, serving by the flesh pots uh, uh, just so that they could have bread to eat. Uh, and my dear friends, make no mistake, uh, uh, even in America today, our civil liberties... Uh, are being stripped away uh, and people could care less uh, as long as they got food in their belly uh, they don't care who's uh, running of the government they don't care what's going on in our streets they don't care uh, about churches and about the things of God uh, as long as they have something to eat uh, and it's filtered into our churches uh, uh, people don't care which Bible you use anymore uh, they don't care about Baptist instinctives anymore uh, uh, they don't care about what thus saith the Lord anymore uh, as long as their ears are tickled uh, as long as they have the uh, blessings in their life uh, clothes on their back uh, gas in their tank uh, food in their belly uh, they're fine uh, they could care less about people dying and going to hell uh, and can I say uh, the closer we get to the coming of the Lord uh, the more somebody will stand and preach the truths of this book, the more murmuring will go on about what a kind of a job he is doing. And make no mistakes, I'm not, I've been at this thing now for about 32 years, uh, and Brother James, uh, all of my ministry there's been complainers. You can tell it doesn't affect me any. Because I learned a long time ago what they're really upset with is what that book is saying. They're upset with what God has set forth as precedents. And Brother Donald, to be honest with you, one thing God did when he made me, he made me not too afraid of people. And he, Miss Brittany, as you know, gave me an extra dose of confidence. And so I would rather people talk about me so that they might leave someone who's weaker in the faith alone. But notice there was murmuring. Now, has not God been good to us these few weeks? Do you realize in these revival meetings we have saw more of, more of God than some churches will ever see? I mean, it, hasn't it been wonderful? But as we sit here tonight, can I tell you that I am getting rumblings of murmurings in the camp? Now, what in the world would we have to complain about? Can I say they were murmuring despite the fact that God had delivered them? Can I help you with something? If you're saved, if your sins have been washed in the blood, if you uh, uh, have your name written down in heaven, uh, if heaven is your eternal home, uh, what in the world do you have to complain about? You ought to be in hell tonight. You understand that. Uh, 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 you ought to be in hell for things you've said and done since you got saved. Uh, but Jesus saved you. Jesus has been good to you. Uh, and what in the world do we have to complain about? But yet there are some complaining. Hmm? Can I say this? I heard there were some complaining about who I let preach. Now let me help you with something. That's not your decision. Last time I checked, now I'm nothing, I'm a zero. But down there on my office door it says pastor. And God has appointed me as the under shepherd. And I answer to the great shepherd. And it's never about the messenger. It's always about the message. It's never about personality. So well, I like someone's personality better. Who cares? 
Personality won't save anybody. But the message from God will change somebody's life. And if you'd have come looking for the message, you might have got some help. I'm not even preaching yet. Don't bow your head. It's not time to go home. I ain't even warmed up. Can I say they murmured even though God had divided the Red Sea? The very obstacle they thought was impossible to be moved, the thing that they thought was going to lead to their death, in an instant God parted it and they walked across on dry ground and then the very fearful thing that they had coming against them, God drowned in the Red Sea in Pharaoh's army. He took away what would pursue them all their days. That thought was gone. Can I help you with something? Some of you in revival meeting got some victory. Some of those yesterdays used to haunt you. They used to pursue you. But through revival meeting, God gave you help. God gave you a verse. God gave you victory. And oh, what a blessing that is. What do we have to murmur about? Can I say they still murmured even though that God allowed them to drink sweet, fresh water from bitter pools. If you read the previous chapter, they got down there to where they thought, boy, here we finally get some water, and it was bitter. Until the Lord told Moses to throw a stick in it. And can I say that stick represents Calvary? And can I say your life was bitter till Jesus came into your life? Uh, now you get to drink from the wells of the water of life freely. Uh, and oh, it's sweet water to the taste. Uh, well, we see the murmuring. I want you to notice the message God gives Moses in verse 4. The Bible says this. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now notice, God did not send them the blessing because they were murmuring. God sent them some restrictions to see if they would follow him. You remember a place called Eden? God told Adam he could eat of all the trees in the garden except one. He gave him some restrictions to see if Adam would follow him. The same principle is right here. God wasn't interested in their welfare as, uh, welfare as much as he was their obedience. Can I help you with something? When you're obedient, you will fare well. Mm? God was interested in whether or not they'd follow his law. He gives a message. There's the murmuring. Notice the manifestation. I don't have time to hit this whole chapter. Look down verse 10. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud... And the Lord spake unto Moses. Hmm? Do you see, uh, uh, look at verse number 12. He said this, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, uh, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. Amen, brother. brother Ray, you think the fact that God sent ten plagues on Egypt and delivered them out of Egypt with all the spoils of Egypt. That would have been enough. Then you think when God parted the Red Sea, that surely would have been enough. Then you think that when God takes bitter waters and makes it sweet, that would be enough. Now he appears in his glory in a cloud. Don't you think that would be the exclamation point? Hmm? I mean, how many times does God have to show up and do something for him? Now, again, I'm not to the message, but think about this. Now, Brother Jack, they did not have a copy of the King James Bible in their lap like you do. They did not have the Spirit of God indwelling them like you do. But God over and over and over reminded them. And they still didn't get it. Now listen, 
If you're born again, blood washed, you do have the Spirit of God. You do have the Word of God. God has blown through here. How many times does God have to come by your way? How many times does God have to speak to you? How many times does God have to bless you? How many times does God have to remind you? He is God. And yet you didn't come in to worship Him tonight. I don't know about anybody else, but that Friday night of that meeting... When them two ladies from Steve Wager's church got to singing, and then Daniel Waters got up behind them saying, We got in the glory. Why aren't we in the glory tonight? Is not God the same yesterday, today, and forever? He changes not. So if He doesn't change, who has? We're just a couple weeks that some of you done forgot about revival. Notice, if you will, the manna in verse 14. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Can I say this was bread from heaven? Now, while Miss Annette and I was gone, we had the privilege and the pleasure, and if God lets me live, it won't be the last time, we ate at Paula Dean's. I highly recommend it, unless you're vegan. <laughs> Brother Clint, you will lose your six-pack at Paula Dean's. Okay. It is okay. Trust me. It is well worth it. And I mean, they brought food. They brought us pork chops. They brought us fried chicken. They brought us meatloaf, not with ketchup on it, with barbecue sauce and crispy onions on top of that. They brought us broccoli and cheese casserole. They brought us uh, 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 mashed potatoes. They brought us mac and cheese. They brought us coleslaw, all you could eat. And trust me, I put the feed bag on. I was a, ch a chowing down. I was enjoying it. It was all good. It was a blessing. And then he says, we've got dessert glory I feast to get ready for dessert and my darling wife says what do you recommend without hesitation he says ooey gooey butter cake I said sign me up it was manna it came from glory it melt in your mouth. It was wonderful. It was so good, we went to the store downstairs and brought it home with us. You know, Miss Annette's already made one, huh? I'm trying to tell you something. When they got out there, it was something like they'd never, ever seen, experienced before. You see, not only is he able to do exceeding abundantly above what we're able to ask or think, he's not only able... Sometimes he just does. Mm -mm. And he did on this occasion. They had no idea when the message was being delivered by Moses and by Aaron that God was going to do something for them. They had no idea how good God was going to do it uh, and what he did. Uh, and he rained manna. That word manna simply means, uh, what is this? Uh, and can I say, they had no idea what it was. Uh, but you know what they said? They said the same thing after God in creation got done. They said, this is good. Uh, hey, uh, it was good in the end enjoyed it uh, can I say we had a little man around here the last few weeks say it's good but I want you to notice after the manna they become mulish or hillbilly terms mule headed notice with me if you will Verse 19. 
Verse number 19, the Bible says, And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses. But some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. Can I say this? God never intended for them to store it up. He wanted them to get it fresh every day. And some of you are still back there on that Friday night of revival meeting. When the Lord wants to give it to you fresh every day. And some of you have missed out and you're no longer in that spirit of revival. You're no longer in that place where you're hungering and thirsting after God. You're no longer excited, can't wait to get to church because it's just Jordan preaching or Phil preaching or Josh preaching. Oh no, Brother Doug's back tonight. And you missed the manna. No, let me help you something. They were mule-headed. They were mulish because they were headstrong. They hearkened not to what Moses told them. Some of us have heard preaching and heard preaching and heard preaching and we still haven't hearkened. God changed some people's lives during the revival meeting, but there's some that still had not got changed. They still haven't been broken. They haven't, they're no different than they were back when we were doing live stream. Because they're hard-headed. They're not going to get right. All I got to do to prove it is mention one word. Facebook. And boy, people get all... That's when that hard-headedness comes out. And again, there are people who watch preaching on Facebook. There's some good things on that. But most people that are on Facebook, it isn't for good. It's being backbiting, busybodying, nosy. Hmm. Boy, that killed the spirit. You know why? Because you're mule-headed. You want to get broken for God and see revival? Shut your Facebook off for the next three weeks and see what God does in your life. I bet you can't do it for two days. Because you're addicted to it. Would to God you get addicted to the scriptures like that. Thank you, Brother Tommy. Not only were their heads strong, they were hard-hearted. You know why I know some of you hadn't got it? Because you hadn't got broken. You're still hard in your heart. This world's beat on you, the devil's beat on you, and the flesh is beat on you to where preaching don't penetrate you anymore. It bounces off of you. You ought to beg God to break your heart. My dear friends, you don't want him to force you to get broken. You ought to be willing to get broken. Because if you're willing to get broken, he'll work on your heart. But if you won't be broken... He may take your children, may take your grandchildren, may take your job, may take your spouse, may take your home. See, God knows what it'll take to break you. Amen. I'm still not preaching yet. They were heedless. They refused to do what God said. Now, you can go out of here and talk about me. I'm in good company. They talk about Moses. When I read this morning's devotion by Brother Jordan, and if you haven't read it, shame on you, dealt with devils in the pews. He was dealing with this crowd right here. You see, if you won't submit to what Jesus says, you're just like when he, when he told Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. You're being a devil in the pew. Go read the devotion. might help you. Hmm? But listen, let's get back on that manna. Since Facebook done got you all jacked up. <laughs> Told you that's all I got mentioned. 
Notice manna. It was it petitioned work to obtain it. They had to go out and pick it up. They had to go out and harvest it for however much they needed for that day. That took work. See, we live in a day and age, Brother Donald, where Christians don't want to work. We don't want to pray and seek God for anything. It amazes me. Some people complain for hours in a day, but they only pray for five minutes a day. You, you, can, you can complain about the government. You can complain about wearing a mask. You can complain about everything. How much do you pray? Amen. How much do you ask God to change this society? How much do you ask God to change the heart of these politicians? Yeah. Yeah. How much do you ask God to save all these wicked people that are rioting in our streets? Yeah. See, there's a whole lot to pray about, but we do a whole lot of complaining, not yeah. much praying. Yeah. True. True. See, it takes work to be a real Christian. Yeah. Sure. To be fresh, to come into the house of God ready to worship. That takes work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what, in order to have manna, it's going to take work if you're going to obtain it. Manna also proved a walk of obedience. When you came back to your tent with manna, that meant you was obedient to God. You went out and got it. And when folks got a touch of God on your life, you can tell they've been obedient because the Spirit of God's not going to touch and bless somebody that's not been faithful. Amen. Because I say this about manna. Manna pictures worship's obligation. Now, in some resolve, some, some resolve, it does picture Christ because he's the bread of life. But we can't work to get Christ. But what it does picture is worship's obligation. What does worship do for a believer? Now, I'm not talking about assembling. I'm talking about true worship. Worshiping God in spirit and truth. Can I say this? First of all, it shows... Uh, and, and worship is to be sweet. Yep. Amen. When you are truly worshiping God, it is sweet to your soul. Amen. There's no, nothing bitter in worshiping Jesus. Amen. Not only is it sweet, it is satisfying. When you worship, you go back to your house satisfied. You go back full. You go back excited. You go back changed. You go back rejoicing. Uh, when you don't worship, you go back the same way you came in. And can I say something else? It also creates a savor. When we worship God from our hearts, it's a sweet-smelling savor unto God. But when worship meets its obligation, there's a savor in us. It creates an appetite for more worship. I mentioned that Paula Deans thing. I don't think it's all eat up. When I get home, guess what I'm having? Hmm? We went down there, Brother Greg's over the weekend. Brother Denny and Miss Kathy was kind enough to take us to, to a steakhouse. Glory. I believe God is in me eating the hind end of cow. That's good. Huh? And the place where we ate, Brother Aaron, the waiter told us that they grilled them steaks at 1,800 degrees and then they brought them out on a plate that was 500 degrees. So no matter how long we sat there in fellowship, the steak wouldn't get cold. It was good. It was excellent. It was a ribeye. It was good. It was real good. You say, why are you saying that? I think I'm, I'm probably going to have some steaks sometime this week, so I'm saying it. It creates an appetite. Huh? You can eat bean sprouts and tofu if you want. Huh? Did y'all ever see what Gandhi looked like? He was a skeleton with skin and he died and went to hell. I'm not eating bean sprouts. Huh? The Bible says the righteous shall be made fat. Figure it out. Worship will create a spiritual desire 
for more worship. Y'all haven't worshipped in about two weeks. Because I can see it. I could sense it. I could not hear the buzz when you got out of your cars. It wasn't even as hot today. Hmm? I want to look again at verse 20. I get to the message. I won't preach as long as I have preached, I promise, unless I do. Y'all get with me, we'll get done quick. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank. I'm going to preach just a few quick points on worms in your worship. Now, to qualify this, they were the children of Israel. They were God's people. And in their tents, or their dwelling places, what they had that should have been sweet, satisfying, and created a savor to go get some more, stank and was filled with worms. Now, I'm being politically correct, Miss Jackie, what it really was was maggots. And I wanted to preach on when your, when your manna becomes maggots, but I, I didn't want to be, uh, you know, make anybody sick. But when you got worms in your worship, it stinks in the nostrils of God. So how do you know when you got worms in your worship? Well, first of all, uh, when our devotion becomes shifted, there's worms in our worship. The Bible says in 1 John 2, 15, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the and the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. When your conversation, when your thinking, when your desire is more on things of the world than it is the Lord, your devotion has shifted and your worship has worms in it. That's why some of you couldn't worship tonight. All, all you've been caught up in is the things of the world. Uh, uh, folks, I, I, I've heard uh, 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 folks uh, uh, more interested in baseball starting up. If you watch that mess, uh, you're not an American. Anybody that'll salute a, a, a flag that is not the stars and stripes and anybody that'll sanction a national anthem that wasn't written by Francis Scott Key. Uh, uh, they're not uh, uh, for America and I'm not going to uh, patronize them. I'm not going to pay their salary. not going to have anything to do with it. Hey, men and women bled and died for us to have the liberties we have. Uh, and can I say this nation was founded upon Christian principles. Uh, when they go against America, they're going against God and I don't have two cents for for them. But some of you, that's all you got on your mind. Some of you, all you got on your mind is things of the world. Some of you, you're sitting there listening to Grouchy Fauci and you're listening to CNN and you're listening to Fox News. I still, since we started revival, haven't watched any of that stuff, haven't watched any local news, uh, and I've been happy, happy, happy. Uh, I got news for you. Uh, it's all designed to bring you down. It's all designed to defeat you, to defeat your spirit, uh, for you to depend on somebody other than yourself. Uh, uh, friend, the only one we need to depend upon is the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he is well able to deliver us. Uh, he has all the answers for your life. Uh, and my dear friends, uh, I, I have found walking with Him. Uh, I have no problems. Uh, and you won't either. And you'll come ready to worship. Uh, some of you got worms in your worship because your devotion has shifted. You're more interested in something else than Jesus. You'll have worms in your worship. I thought about this. There's worms in our worship when our discipline is altered. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know as your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Some of you, when revival meeting was on, you was reading your Bible every day, you was meditating on the Lord, you was praying more, you was singing to the Lord, you had the Lord on your heart and on your mind, uh, but your discipline's altered. You've allowed other things to seep in. You haven't been disciplined enough to crucify that flesh daily. And you're dealing with things that's allowing worms to get in your worship. I'd have much rather you all come in ready to worship tonight and me not have to preach this message. But you know why you're getting this? Because this is what you deserve. You got worms in your worship. Hmm? Can I say when your dog's got worms, you take them to the vet? Hmm? 
Well, you need to get to Dr. Jesus. Amen. Get them worms extracted from your life. Can I say, when there are worms in our worship, we become distant in our fellowship. Mm. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 6, If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You can't worship Jesus if you're not walking with Him. Oh, you can make a show of worship, but you can't truly worship if you're not walking with him. And then it goes on, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. Uh, uh, if we are not walking with Jesus and our fellowship isn't right with him, our fellowship can't be right with one another. Amen. You see, when we become distant in our fellowship, it's because we got worms in our worship. How much have you been walking with Jesus today? How much have you been walking with Jesus this week? Hmm? Sometimes when I call for them handshakes, I can see there are some people, they don't want a fellowship. You know why? they got worms in their worship. When folks get full of Jesus, you know what they want to do? They want to hang out with God's people. Let me say this. You know you got worms in your worship when there's no distinction between the holy and the profane. Ezekiel said in Ezekiel 22 and verse 26, Her priests have violated my law and have profaned mine holy things. They have put no difference between the holy and the profane. Neither have they showed difference between the unclean and the clean and have hid their eyes from my Sabbath and I am profaned among them. When the things of God are no longer holy to you, and when the profane things of this world become okay with you, you got worms in your worship. When you come to the house of God, you ought to come seeking Him. You ought to come full of Him. You got to come hungering for Him. But can I say this? When you come to the house of God ready to worship, you don't look like the world. You don't smell like the world. You don't dress like the world. You don't act like the world. You don't long for worldly music. You don't long for entertainment. You long for Jesus. But when I get up and I preach on how people are dressed, they get mad. They get up with Jesus. He's the one set the standard. I talk about listening to things that glorify God and you haven't been you get mad you say I'm meddling no I'm just telling you the truth you just don't like it you got worms in your worship hmm? listen I've never seen a woman not dress right and have a touch of God on her I've never seen a man not dress right and have a touch of God on him never have seen it hmm? so I don't like that I don't care take it up with Jesus you get Jesus on you, and you'll be dressed right, and you'll talk right. Hey, when that madman got born again, yeah. they found him clothed yeah. and in his right mind. Right. Yeah. Hmm? Huh? How did Nicodemus know that Jesus was master? Called him rabbi. You know what rabbis have a same distinction of? The way they look. Can I say, the high priest couldn't even enter in the temple unless he was dressed right. And Revelation 1, 6 says he has made us kings and priests. You ever see a king look like a bum? And why does some of God's people? You're welcome, didn't it cost you anything. You're still mad over Facebook. You might as well call you a bum too. It's truth whether you like it or not. Hmm? If you was invited to go to a state dinner at the White House, you wouldn't go looking like a bum. Well, you got invited to something better than the White House. You got invited to God's house. Huh? If you got summoned to the courthouse and stood before a judge, you couldn't look like a bum. 
your attorney would put you in a suit, put you in a nice dress. Well, you're summoned before the judge of all judges. You're welcome. Didn't cost you anything. See, when we put no distinction between that which is holy and that which is profane, we got worms in our worship. God said, be ye holy, for I'm holy. Go back and get that message I preached about a month ago on being holy. Be holy. Not aspire holiness. Be holy. Just do it. He doesn't give you the power to. Well, this is going over great. But I'm right on target whether you like it or not. I know enough the Holy Ghost know enough to mind him and he said preach it and I'm preaching and having a time because I'm going to go eat butter cake here in a minute <laughs> you got worms in your worship when you're disgruntled when you get disgruntled you're always finding fault yeah. Yeah. Amen. now I said a minute ago God's been really good to us lately Amen. it's awful hard to find fault when God's bouncing off the walls when folks are getting saved, young ones are getting tore up, and gods are doing a work, it's kind of hard to find fault. But you wouldn't believe some things I've heard. You know why people find fault? Because they're bitter. Hebrews 12, 15 says, Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. See, when you get bitter, you, you destroy everybody around you. Yep. Ephesians said in Ephesians 4, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. When you're disgruntled, guess what you're doing? You're grieving Him. Yep. It says, Whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking but be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you see when you're disgruntled and you're mad at everybody and everything even Christ won't forgive you till you get right hmm? whether or not you believe this I mean, let's just be honest. Can we be honest? We've got this far in the message. Let's just be honest. Has not God been good to us? Amen. Has not He blessed our church? Amen. I mean, what more could we have asked God to do? I mean, we didn't even have revival planned, and He just broke it out, meeting after meeting, and, and people drove from uh, all corners of the earth. I mean, South Carolina and West Virginia, Virginia, and everything just heard about it. When folks called me, what's going on up there? Uh, heard all the way from St. Lucia, what's happening? And would it shock you to know that people have sat in these meetings? And now they're looking for another church. I'm talking about members have gotten disgruntled. They haven't come and talked to me about it, but they've gotten disgruntled. You know why? They have worms in their worship. When I heard about it, I got to thinking back, and in all three of the, the, the meetings we had, I didn't see him on the altar one time. Didn't see him broken. Didn't see him full of the Holy Ghost. Because they're bitter. But I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to have worms in my worship. Hmm? I mean, it dumbfounded me. Now listen, I'm not being egotistical. I'm just being right on this. We're the best church in Northern Kentucky. It don't matter if I'm pastor or who's pastor around here. I mean, we're the best church in Oregon, Kentucky. If I didn't believe that, I'd be where the best church in Oregon, Kentucky was. I mean, I'd be dumb. I mean if, if there's one down the street, why would I be hanging out here? I always want the best. Miss Nett used to get mad at me. Christian played football. I bought him $400 helmet. Why did you buy him a 400 It's only his head, honey. Bought him the best. 
Sydney played softball, bought her $500 ball gloves. Said, what? No, well, why? It's the best. We always do the best. Uh, uh, if I do the best for stupid stuff, why wouldn't I do the best for the Lord? Uh, if we wasn't the best, I'd be where the best is. I just know me. So if somebody has sat at the table the best and has sat on them for something less, because they're disgruntled. I mean, are we still doctrinally straight? Are we still preaching the same book? Are we still looking and pointing to Jesus? Huh? Is our music right? Is everything we do around here right? Well, why would you want to leave? Unless you got what John White would say, a burr in your saddle. Hmm? Worms in your worship. Hmm? Can I say this lastly before you pass out? We do have a defibrillator now. We can shock you back into existence. <laughs> you just might have worms in your worship when you're not disturbed over the lost and the wayward not being right with God. If I was thrilled, we got so many families on vacation. I was thrilled when I got back Monday night come to go out on visitation still had 19, 19 out on visitation it's a blessing folks going out I mean it was hot folks going out we had a good time passing out tracks let folks know Jesus loves them when you get over the thrill of Calvary's Hill and you get over the fact of why and what Jesus commissioned us to do to take the gospel to the lost when seeing folks like Brandon get right with God doesn't thrill you anymore you got worms in your worship are we not to be Christian which means to be Christ like all the miracles that Jesus did all the teaching that he did all that he did was because he came seeking to save that which was lost and he said this in Matthew 23 he repeated also in Luke but he said this in Matthew 23 verse 37 O Jerusalem Jerusalem thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which are sent unto thee how often would I have gathered thy children together even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings and you would not Jesus is lamenting over those that would not believe and trust in him. All the preachers and prophets they sent, they stoned and they rejected. It broke his heart. It ought to break our hearts when people reject the Lord. It ought to break our hearts knowing there's still people within stone throw of our church lost on their way to hell. It ought to break our hearts knowing that, and I mean, we can go across the room, everybody's got family members out of church, not living right, not doing right. See, when that doesn't disturb you anymore, you got worms in your worship. I don't want to have any worms. I want fresh manna. I mean, the Bible deals in freshness. There was fresh oil. There's fresh manna. There's a fresh touch. There's fresh water. I want the freshness of God in my life. The reason some of y'all's worship got worms in it is because you're still living back there a couple weeks ago. If you sit in my seat, the catbird seat, you'd see what's ahead. And you'd get awful jacked up. It's not time to sit down and say, well, God's been good. It's time to say, well, let's just see how good God can get. Hmm? And it comes by having the worms extracted from our worship. It comes back to getting disciplined, becoming obedient, and doing the work that it takes to get the manna that's sweet unto our taste, that satisfies us, that creates that hunger for more. My dear friends, that all starts with one step of getting back to where Jesus would have us to be, that we might truly have that freshness in our soul again I know it's been hot I know you faced a lot I know the devil hadn't let up brother Peter and Miss Dawn got away for a few days only to come back and the hot water heater blew up and destroyed their basement I mean I mean, the devil's pulled out all the stops on everybody anything that can go wrong is going to go wrong he's wanting to rob you and steal from you and kill you and just do away with everything that you gained in those revival meetings that's up to you you're going to let him 
or are you going to put up a fight? Are you going to do what it takes to get manna from heaven? I hope and pray you do. Because there's no telling what God will do if we'll just get to where it's sweet and satisfying. The old timers used to say, get under the spout where the honey comes out. Amen. Some of you need to get there tonight. Huh? Y'all remember Winnie the Pooh? He'd get stuck in holes trying to get honey. Some of you need to get stuck on Jesus trying to get the honey. Are you listening? Don't, don't quit till your soul is satisfied in the things of Jesus. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we love you. Forgive us when we let worms get in the way of our worship. When what we come to offer you stinks in the nostrils of God because it's perpetrated by self it's perpetrated by no paying the price, just going through the motions. God, we want fresh things from the Lord. Lord, you said in the scriptures that our mercies are re your mercies are renewed every day. So why wouldn't we want a fresh taste from God every day? So Father, help us to pay the price. Help us to do what is necessary. Bless this invitation. Help your people to realize the goodness of God starts with one step. Some tonight, Lord, just have been beat down. Maybe they just need some help, some refreshing from God. I pray you'd do something for them. Some may have been facing a storm. I pray you'd speak peace, be still to their soul tonight. There may be somebody here tonight, Lord, lost without God. I know it wasn't a salvation message, but the Holy Ghost convicts through everything. And God, if there's somebody unsaved, I pray tonight, through cords of love, you draw them to repentance. Now, Father, have your will and way. Speak to hearts, get glory, and may our worship truly honor the Lord. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.